So let's go back to our charge pump PLL and we'll, we'll look at the one with the simple, simple capacitor based uh, loop filter. So we'll review the transfer functions for the charge pump PLL. We know that the open loop transfer function phi out over phi E was equal to KVCO times IP times F of S divided by 2 pi times S. And recall that this IP divided by 2 pi is the charge pump gain. Okay, we can look at the closed loop transfer function phi out over phi n. And we can look at the error transfer function, phi error divided by phi n. Okay, so we see that these transfer functions are a function of the loop filter transfer function. And let's consider our simple capacitor loop filter. Now recall that the transfer function that we're looking for in the charge pump domain uh, uh, type of PLL is a current in, a voltage out divided by a current in. So we're looking for F of S to equal V out of S over I in of S. This is an impedance and it's just the impedance of the capacitor in this case. So it's one over SC. Now let's go ahead and make and substitute this loop filter into our open loop transfer function. So we have now that G of S is equal to KVCO times IP divided by S squared times 2 pi times C. Now, as we think about this, is this a problem for us? Well, yes, we have two integrations and uh, this loop, so it's going to be a very similar problem to when we had uh, when we uh, did the continuous time uh, type two PLL that had two integrators, and we didn't add a zero. So if we look at the transfer function, we have two zeros. This means that our total phase shift is 180 degrees, or that our phase margin is equal to zero degrees. So if we put a step in frequency into our system, there's going to certainly be a lot of ringing. And if we have any parasitics in the system that change the transfer function a little bit or add additional poles and zeros, we could have some instability. So if you recall how we fixed this problem with the type two uh, PLL, we added a zero to the transfer function. So let's go ahead and do that. So in order to add a zero to this transfer function, we're just going to put a resistor in series with the capacitor. So our new transfer function for this loop filter then we're just finding the impedance of the filter essentially. F of S is equal to 1 plus SRC divided by SC. So we have that 0 in the numerator and we have the integrator in the denominator. What we'll notice here is that the solution is similar to the integrate and lead filter that we looked at before. Remember we also called that a P plus I filter. Okay, so our new solution, our new closed loop transfer function is omega n squared 
times 1 plus SRC divided by S squared plus 2 zeta omega n plus omega n squared. And our natural frequency omega is equal to IP times KVCO divided by 2 pi times C. Zeta is equal to R over 2 times the square root of IP times C times KVCO over 2 pi. So we can use this transfer function to design PLLs similar to how we did before. Of course, we have a transfer function in the S domain, so if we want to find the time domain response of the filter, we can multiply the transfer function by the input stimulus, do an inverse Laplace transform, and figure out what the time domain response is of this PLL. Last thing I want to note for today is that if zeta is less than 1, the decay time is constant uh, in the time domain response. So remember before we had some exponential response and it had some time constant that uh, was proportional to a resistance and a capacitance? Well, in the charge pump PLL we see the same type of behavior. This time our time domain uh, decay constant tau decay is equal to 1 over zeta times omega n. Now we know values for zeta and omega n so we can reasonably say that we can pick a settling time by specifying the different constants for zeta and omega n. Okay, so we'll stop there uh, for today, and in the next lecture, we're going to start looking at practical considerations of uh, designs with charge uh, with charge pumps.